Hello, my friend. Glad to see you made it, for we have gathered here today in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. He's alive. He lives. All throughout the Bible, from the beginning all the way to the ending. It speaks of many things, but the one thing it speaks most of is the blessing. I, I, the Lord your God, desire to bless you. And so I hope for this next year, this new year coming up, 2022, that something good is going to happen. It's been a long year. It's been a long past two years. But in that last year, this very day, one year ago, I said, this next year is going to be full of positive change. And I was living back in Denver at the time. And today I'm living in a church out in a beautiful small town. A lot of positive change did happen within my own personal life. Stop smoking. Live in the church. <laughs> all kinds of change happened. And all of it was positive. And I hope you were able to experience that good positive change within your life as well. But for some reason or another, I just have the overwhelming feeling that this next year in 2022 is going to be a year of many disasters. And it's not that God has decided not to bless you. I believe God still desires to bless you, to bless each and every one of us. It's just we are about to reap exactly what we've sown in the same way. We start off the new year in uh, Boulder County here in Colorado and half the city of, Saint, of uh, Louisville burns down. And those aren't poor people. Those people are a majority of your business owners, rich people, people who have invested their lives into greed. And God graciously burns the entire city down. Not all of it, but a lot of it. I believe there's going to be a lot of fires across California, a lot of fires, Colorado, and many more disasters out there in these cities and towns and places that have chosen to abandon good. And a just reward will be given to them. And that's, that's the way uh, I think it's going to go. God is going to be Again, to, to rain out to each individual exactly what they deserve. Because our God is righteous, our, our God is full of justice. He is good. You know, when Jesus returns, He's not returning to deal with sin or sinners. He's already dealt with that. Instead, he's coming to bring a reward to those who are faithfully waiting for him. Those who are being oppressed. Those who are locked in poverty. He's coming to give relief to the widows and the orphans who have been rejected. And I pray, I pray you would turn from evil. I mean, if, if you are a nurse, if you are a doctor, you can't escape God. And if you 
believe within your heart you're doing something that is causing someone injury, then quit. Stop. Choose to do what is right. Leave that profession or do good. Choose to do good. You, you can do that. Even if you get fired, it'd be better to be fired for doing good to be doing right than it would be to just simply follow orders. If you see doctors practicing malpractice, using their authority or their position as an opportunity to hurt another person, you, you need to report that. Even if it costs you your job, there's millions of jobs out there and they need somebody to fill that position and choose to do what is right. I'd rather see you do what is right, make a little bit of money than to have lots of money and continually choosing to do wrong because God is our avenger, and he will avenge us. God is our refuge, and he will deliver us. He will protect us. He will burn your cities down. He will destroy you, because that's what a good God does for people who are being oppressed. You don't have to believe me, but he will. All throughout the Bible, it speaks of the blessing. God so desired to bless humanity, he created humanity within his own image. What a blessing. He wanted to bless good and righteousness. So he destroyed all wickedness and evil and violence throughout the world back in Noah's day. He wanted to bless Abraham and his seed. So he went to Abraham and delivered him out of a bad city, of a bad place so that he could bless him. God wanted to bless Jacob. He wanted to bless Israel. He wanted to bless Isaac. He wanted to bless David. All throughout the Bible, God is wanting and desiring to bless people. And that's the good news within the Bible. That's why we believe in the Bible. That's why we've placed our hope in the Bible because it speaks of a good God who desires to bless the people who believe in him, that believe in the blessing. And the blessing comes by faith in Jesus Christ. Abraham was very hospitable, a, a good guy, stood up for righteousness. Noah was a good man, and, and he stood up for righteousness. You know, they weren't actively engaging in the works of evil, even though they, by nature, born weak. God chose them. God is in complete control and he can choose anyone he so wishes. And I pray and hope he would choose you to see, to understand, 
that the blessing comes by faith through Jesus Christ. Abandoning our willingness to fulfill the greedy desires, our willingness to abandon the acts of slander. I want you to know that there are no murderers in heaven. And if so, if you know somebody is actively engaged in mass murder or genocide or doing things that you know are going to harm another person, you need to abandon that. You must separate from And then you will find the blessing. How can anyone be blessed if, if no one is willing to actively do what it is they wished others would do to them? Do you actively wish harm upon other people? Do you wish harm upon yourself? You must abandon them in order to receive the blessing. I still believe love. Many people will tell you, people I've talked to, that the search for love, the desire for, for love is, might be sin. That's disgusting. That is complete opposite of everything God teaches and preaches to us. Love is where you're going to find the blessing. And the greatest gift God has ever given to man was a woman, was a mother. For mothers, women, you want to put an end to spousal abuse. Raise your son to be a good man. Some of the problems with today, we, as women, want somebody else to raise our children. We want the television to raise our children. We want the government and public schools to raise our children, but we ourselves don't want to invest much time at all into our children. We're too busy investing our time into feminism, into careers, into our social status, and paying the price for it. Go back in time to when I was a kid, before internet, before the cell phones, for the computers. And what a simpler time it was and what a good time that was. That was when humanity was good and vibrant. People out doing things, finding their entertainment in some other place than their face being stuck in a phone. You know, we have our Christmas dinner, and there's no family not subject to this. We're all the same. Go to Christmas dinner, and then everybody sitting in the same room, and yet all of them have their face stuck in their phones, ignoring everything around them because they're too busy with what's coming out of that phone, and usually it's pure evil. A lot of evil being projected from that thing. Teaching you and trying to uh, convince you that evil is good, wrong is okay. But never say that. Never be a part of that. 
Wrong will always be wrong, and evil will always be evil. And that's why I say, turn. Turn from it. Even if you have to quit your job, turn from it. I myself would, will not buy anything from Walmart. I will not buy anything from a communist owned store while living in free America. I'm not gonna do it. I don't want nothing to do with that. Because you're just feeding the monster, the true monster. The monster that brings in oppression. Besides that, the, they have no sense of pride at Walmart and they will sell to you trash, junk, absolute garbage, and act like you, you got a good deal for buying their trash. Do you have no value? Don't you value yourself, your, your money, your hard work? Why buy garbage pretending you have been justified? Stupid. And I won't shop there. And I won't allow a, a bunch of wicked, evil people to dictate to me what I should or should not be doing. Instead, I'm going to put my faith in God who is righteous and who guides us continually away from the things that are considered temptation, wickedness, evil, bad. Guides us into a way of eternal life. That's what I hope within this next year, 2022, that you would believe God. That you would believe God when God says, be like Jesus Christ. Be like Abraham. Be like Noah. Be righteous. Be good. Because in being righteous and being good, you're going to find a great blessing. That's where it begins. Like David. I mean, it's the same today as it was back in the, in the time of King Saul and David. I mean, they, they'd go out and they would dress for battle in the same way we do every day. Hey, we, we're supposed to dress ourselves in the armor of God, the helmet of salvation, the, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, a sword of truth. And our feet shod with peace, dressed in peace. Dress ourselves in, in the armor of God. Go out every day and ready for battle, but never willing to engage in the fight. Do it all the time. Nothing's changed. Saul was one of the ultimate in uh, the expression of what a coward really is. Even when he was anointed by God to be the king of Israel, they couldn't find Saul because he was hiding himself from everybody out back there, hiding away. And yet he was head and shoulder bigger than any man out there. And that's what people want. That's what people seek for, the image, the outer image. And yet God says, I don't care about any part of the outer image. I care about what's inside the heart of a man. He gave Saul as a king to the people because they rejected God 
And so he gave them exactly what they wanted. A, a person who was vile, who was disgusting, who was a coward. He gave them everything God was not because it was God they rejected. And so that he gave them the opposite. Someone with no courage. Someone who would place your life on the line in order to save their own life. Just like the doctors, nurses are doing today. And I'm not saying all of them are engaged in it. I know 90% of the doctors and nurses out there are still wanting to do what is right, but they're afraid to do what is right. They're afraid to rock the boat. As long as somebody else is being harmed and not myself, I'm okay. Saul, for his entire time of being a king, the king of Israel, they were at war. Whether he was at war against the Philistines or he was at war against his own countrymen, they were at war. Every day he'd go about fighting and it wasn't him fighting. It wasn't him putting his life on the line. It was him subjecting the lives of the Israelites, putting their lives on the line. Because that's what they wanted. They wanted a king, just like everybody else had. Instead of a God who was willing to put his life on the line to protect his people, they wanted a king who placed their lives on the line in order to protect him. The opposite. So one day they find themselves in a great valley one side is an Israelite army, always dressed for battle, going out each and every morning. In fact, David's brothers were involved and were there in the army. And there on the other side of the valley are the Philistines, the enemies of Israel. And there they are. Neither side willing to engage in the battle, but both sides willing to flex their muscles. And then one day a giant comes out. Goliath, right? We all know the story. Goliath comes out for 40 days and 40 nights begging the Israelites to engage in the battle. You send out your best warrior, you send out your strongest man, and let him come and defeat me. And if he defeats me, we, the Philistines, will become your slaves. But if I win, and I defeat your champion, and Goliath was a champion of war, had well known as being a, a great warrior and not just a great warrior. He was the biggest of all warriors physically. He stood some nine foot tall. He was huge. He was giant. His sword was huge. It was giant. His shield was so big, he had to have a shield bearer, a man who carried his shield for him. 
this javelin was so huge it had a, like a weaver's beam, a full out log holding on so he may throw it. He was a real brute of a man and a champion at war. He was trained from childhood to be a warrior. And all of Israel was afraid of that one man. I see it today. United States of America, the whole, all of America, practically the whole world, afraid of a few men. And they are just men. But afraid of those men. And put, give so much value and put so much weight upon their decisions. So they come out each and every day bringing forth fear. Same as clients, bringing forth fear. I know what you're afraid of. And so I'm going to preach to you fear. I'm going to preach to you each and every day the thing I know you're afraid of most. And everybody, entire nation, sitting back, I'm afraid of your words. Come out dressed in armor. Come out dressed, ready for battle. We see it all the time. You can see it in the things people post and the things people share there in social media. But our actions prove true. Our lack of actions prove true. David's father sends him to his brothers. Go check on your brothers and see if they're okay. Take them some food. Take them some water. Go and tend to their basic needs. And David does. And David goes and he's sitting there and he notices Goliath coming out and mocking an entire nation. Aren't you guys the army of God? Not just an army, but the army God has chosen. The army of God. You are Israelites. God's chosen people. The people God has chosen to bless. And yet you're afraid? Why won't you engage in the battle? Hey, man, we'll be talking like that. We, we could get hurt by engaging in the battle. Could lose our lives. You keep quiet. David says, well, if none of you will take forth any courage. If none of you will believe in the blessings of God, I will. I'll believe in it. I'll put my faith in God. And I will kill that Philistine for you. I'll kill that uncircumcised devil for you. I mean, that guy mocks God and defies the armies of God. Who does he think he is? He oppresses you through your own fears.
Word gets back to Saul, the king. Hey, there's this young man who's <coughs> willing to go to battle with Goliath. What? Somebody who wants to engage in the battle? Bring this man to me. Not just a young man, but a, a boy. A teenage boy. He's all handsome, good looking, small in stature. But he had a heart for God. He wanted to be like God. That's what it means when you have a heart for God. I want the heart of God to be alive within me. I want to be like Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the God who laid down his life in order to protect over his people. Never once asking his people to lay down their lives in order to protect him. Because he is a God not a man. So it says, you can't go to battle looking like a shepherd. Put on my armor. What was the thing protecting Saul? Cowardness. I don't want your cowardness to cover over me. Not used to that feeling. So he put his armor on. And, I don't like it. I'm not comfortable with it. I'm not used to it. I don't know nothing about cowardness. In fact, all I need is a rock and a sling, and I will take down that uncircumcised Philistine in the same way I took down a bear that came for my sheep, in the same way I took down a lion that came for my sheep. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. God is our avenger. Sure, we prepare for battle and we're ready for the war, but it is God who brings the victory. The battle belongs to the Lord. He will defend his sheep. That's what a good shepherd does. I protect what's mine. I don't ask the things that were given to me to protect over me. I protect what belongs to me. As a good shepherd protects his sheep. All I need to win this battle is my faith in God. Uncircumcised Philistine. That unbeliever is not protected by God. And no matter what they bring to the battle, unprotected by God. I have nothing to fear. I will not fear man. What can man do that would make me afraid when God is for me? If I put my faith in God, if you put your faith in God, you will not be put to shame. has nothing to do with the works of malice or a desire for revenge. I'm going to stand up for righteousness. I'm going to do what is good because the health of everyone is depending upon it. Let me go 
go to battle. And they agree. They allow David to go in battle. What will we lose? We have nothing to lose. Let him go. David goes down to the threshing floor, to the battle floor, down to the valley. Even though I walk through the valleys of the shadows of death, I will not be afraid, even though I stand face to face with evil. I will not fear, because the Lord is with me. Goliath comes down to the valley to meet David. Oh, finally! The Israelite cowards have decided to engage in war with me. They decided to break out of their cowardness. They decided to challenge my authority, that great champion of war. Goliath sees David in his small stature and how handsome he is. He looks all ruddy. Handsome. You send a dog to the battle? You think I'm a dog? You send a boy? I'm a champion. Can't even send to me a man? Goliath is enraged, he's mad, he curses David and the Israelites by the power of whatever God he had put his faith in. This very day, I will beat you down, I will destroy you, and I will cut your head off and feed your dead body to the birds of the air and to the beasts of the field. David with one of the greatest quotes known to humanity. Goliath, oh giant, you may be. You made a mistake because you came to me by the power of weapons. By the power of the javelin and by the power of the sword. You came to me by the power of your own strength. But I come to you by the power of the living God, whom you have defied. I will remove your head from your body. I will cut you down and I will feed your dead body to the birds of the air, to the beasts of the field, so that the whole world will know that there is a God on earth. There is a God in Israel and he protects those whom he loves. How many of you live your life in such a way that your desire is that there, everybody in the world would know that there's a God in you. There is a God within your home. There is a God who cares for you and will deliver you out of any situation known to man. How many of you live your life as according to that? How many of you strive to show this world that there's a God on earth? He stands for righteousness and everything known as good. Do you live your life in such a way? Why not? What is stopping you? What are you afraid of? With one rock, without one weapon of war, without armor, without anything to protect him, David changed the course of history. 
because it was at that moment he took down Goliath with a rock and a sling. One shot. And you know there's a God in Israel today because he took action when nobody else would. He put his faith in God when nobody else would. And today you know there's a God on earth because of that action. I want to bless this next year for you. Because I believe, by faith in God, good things happen. And even though I believe a lot of disasters are going to compound <coughs> or be rained out upon those who have chosen not to put their faith in God, I also believe all good things are coming from God. And even though the disasters will be rained out, there's still a blessing to be found. Even though fear will continue to be rained out, there's still a blessing to be found. And so let us pray. Heavenly Father, we love you and we thank you for all the wonderful things you're doing in our lives today. We know that the goodness of your Holy Spirit is not limitless or limited. But all things are possible for those who believe and that believe that you reward those who follow you by faith. I ask that you'd go to the hearts and minds of those who have been experiencing sickness throughout these past few years. That you'd bless the doctors and the nurses who are tending after these people's needs with wisdom and the ability to cure that sickness. And Father, I ask that you would just send your Holy Spirit into the hearts and minds of these men and women across the world with your healing power. Let the doctors, let the nurses be amazed that there is such a power here on earth that nothing is too small for you. No pain is too small, no sickness is too small. No pain is too great and no sickness is too great for the power of your healing. We ask that you would heal the sick, that you would heal the crippled, that you would rain your Holy Spirit into the homes of the brokenhearted, filling those homes full of joy. Give us a reason to laugh over this next year. Give us something to hope for throughout this next year. Allow your Holy Spirit to give us the strength and the courage to believe in righteousness and to stand up for the things that are good. We know righteousness will endure no matter how hard those workers of evil try to instill fear into us. We know and believe that all righteousness belongs to you and comes from you and therefore it is eternal. It will stand, it will rise, and it will overcome that which was meant to destroy. We ask, Father, that you would share and show mercy to the weak. That you would share, show mercy to the blind by allowing them to see the righteousness that belongs in you. Father, rain down from heaven your Holy Spirit. Let this next year be the year that the world has recognized as the year you arrive. 
Reveal your righteousness. Unveil your goodness by the power of the Holy Spirit, baptizing each one of these people who are watching today with something good. And the only good I know is found in the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord and my Savior, who has provided for me a house filled with righteousness and your Holy Spirit. We ask, Father, that you would bless those who are not experiencing love with love. Allow these people to see and understand the value of a good spouse, the value of righteousness, let these people see and understand the value of your Holy Spirit alive within them. We love you, Jesus. We love you. And we thank you for choosing to unveil to us your salvation. We thank you. We thank you for this house of prayer. I thank you, Father, for the water we drink. We thank you, Father, for the food we eat. We thank you, Father, for the birds that sing. Gracious God, we thank you for everything. Fill these people's lives with something good so that the world may know there is a good God here on earth looking out for them. In the name of our Father, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Be blessed over this next year because God is desiring to bless you through the acts of righteousness. Like we're 